Hello, and it's been a while. Ba -ba -ba. Oh, that hurt. Hello everyone, my name is Isabel. In today's video, we are going to talk about the top Filipino money culture or myths in honor of the Filipino American History Month. As you can see, I have a different setup today. I have my headphones on and my actual mic in here that I use, but um, I actually just recently realized that it is Filipino American History Month for the month of October, and so I kind of wanted to honor that, and for me, I thought of for like creating a video in relation to that, and so I thought of this. And I've also kind of been listening to like different podcasts and even like um, podcaster from the Philippines and so I was inspired to kind of do this. Not that I'm an actual speaker or anything like that, but I thought it would just be fun for me to try this out. So that's why I'm doing this. Um, and I guess just a little bit of a disclaimer, I am 100% Filipino no doubt about that i know how to speak tagalog and everything um i was born and raised in the philippines um i moved here when i was 15 years old and so you guys know the story from there from when i went to college and i will post the videos about like my school life journey and until i became a pharmacist until i have um had all of those student loans and now that i'm finally i have finally paid off those six uh digit figure of gigantic enormous student loans and so now i'm just focusing more on just trying to grow wealth and um you know being generous to to those in need so yeah <laughs> and um and with regards to these topics that I'm going to be talking about, I hope that you don't take offense in any of these. Uh, this is just what I have, I guess, researched and also have observed from when I was growing up as a kid. So <laughs> uh, this is more on, I'm not judging on like anyone's beliefs or whatsoever. It's more on probably just trying to... Uh, objectively I guess criticize the decisions but not on like the beliefs so yeah without further ado let's get started with the top Filipino money culture slash myths so what are the different money talks money culture money mindset from when growing up as a Filipino or raised in the Filipino household. So first things first, we have what we call a one day one one day millionaire culture. So what is one day millionaire culture? That is so when a person has accumulated some wealth from um, either from winning the lottery or maybe like an uh, inheritance from a family member who died or maybe some bonus that they have gotten from like a business deal from a client at work or simply like maybe they worked abroad for a couple of years and then they went back to the Philippines to you know move back with their family and so they have all these money that they think they can spend and again usually it's spent in such a very quick way we're in like you would think like how are they spending this much money in such a short amount of time so <laughs> the thing is with a one day millionaire culture um they think that they can afford everything so and they and they think that they're not gonna be running out of money when in fact they are because there's no money coming in there's no um cash flow coming in and you know the way they spend the money in such a short amount of time it just makes you think of are they even actually thinking about their spending like are they actually you know having decisions 
or like the right decisions probably most of the time not and the thing is it sometimes it's coming from a good cause like when I what I mean by that is that um, usually they do spend money for to help other people or like maybe to help a relative you know finance something or like um, you know treating the family members out to dinner there are times where in that person do spend money just to show off you know like the branded clothes the branded items that they wear like all of these new gadgets that they have but again as a financially literate person you can see where the error is coming from because whether or not it's for coming from a good cause or a bad cause before you help others you know you should help yourself first before you are able to give abundantly like you want to make sure that your financial finances are stable first like you don't necessarily have to to spend money like you know in just a quick snap or something like you always have to think about whether spending that money is worth it or not so like for example if it's just like oh i want to i want to buy myself a new iphone like do you really need a new iphone like every year like for the most part when they think that they deserve to spend the money you know like i i get that like i'm like that too when i finish paying off my loans i kind of i'm not gonna lie like i'm in a spendy mode right now but at the same time i kind of come back to my senses saying that oh i gotta you know i kind of got to stop this because this thinking because i'm not necessarily helping my future in the long run so like if i don't have enough for my retirement you know by the time i retire and like i don't want to sorry <laughs> i don't want to use like my kids or something as a retirement like i want to make sure that i'm secured first and then once i do that then i would be able to you know give to others abundantly i mean kind of sounds selfish saying that but when you think about the long term you are actually helping a lot of people because you're not going to be depending on anyone else when you do retire and at the same time like th the more that you will that you're actually going to be able to help others because you yourself is you know already secure if you know what i mean so one day millionaire culture for you to be able to counter that um I think you just gotta have to have that mindset that what am I doing for myself in the long term? You gotta set some boundaries as well when helping other people. I mean, sometimes there are people who you've helped numerous times, but they're not, they themselves are not helping themselves to get back up to their feet. So in a way, you're kind of like enabling them to, to be to depend on you so that's that <laughs> all right the next one is filipinos hate talking about numbers or math and most of the time they usually they usually associate it with money and then that turns into like a humor wherein it's supposed to be something serious so <laughs> you know when i thought of this and, and when I like researched about this I was like huh that's kind of funny as well <laughs> not gonna lie because you know stereotypically Asians are like considered like good in math and um but in reality um or at least I would say like amongst Filipinos they they hate talking about numbers so what happens is that you know when when money is involved numbers are involved like if there's like i guess some sort of like calculation involved like people don't think about it 
like okay f- i guess just an, as an example um like with my friends my friends would probably know about this but like when we do eat out there's always that one person in our group that um that is given the receipt and then the one that calculates and like how much are we gonna like divide the whole bill for so <laughs> and then it's just more like pointing fingers to that person like can you please take care of it and stuff like that um I don't think it was me though I don't think so <laughs> I'm also so that's why I'm guilty too that's and that's why I'm like I related to this so much because yes that is true and then of course the other example is that when I graduate or during pharmacy school like obviously we kind of know already on like how much our student loans are but not to like the exact a sense amount um so like sometimes when one would one of my friends would bring up oh hey do you know like how much you owe in your student loans and then we're like no I don't want to look at it <laughs> so then what happens is that you know we just you know stop talking about it and yeah that's just something that the idea about like I guess money in like for Filipinos is such kind of like a taboo topic like student loans debts um even like income like those are not necessarily things that you talk about with like friends or even family members probably more so with family members not gonna lie because again um you know you kind of you know you kind of don't want to share like how much you're earning because you always have that thinking that oh they're probably gonna ask money from me and stuff like that which honestly i mean you know i, I don't know for like other cultures if it's like that but I would say at least for like my culture it's kind of like that and so obviously with me as you guys know like I'm very open talking about money I'm not like a secretive or anything with my friends well maybe like the first times like when I was um starting with this channel <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't tell them about it because I'm I mean of course I would be shy to to let them know that I'm in YouTube or something but like I guess with my family like I've learned to actually be open about it and I've kind of learned as well to you know set boundaries for myself yeah I mean in a way it's good to actually talk about it because you know it's like bringing awareness to other people like but like for example with with like my friends when if maybe when when they do see my video and then they see that I'm earning this much but they're not earning as same like maybe they could they would have the guts to like talk to their superior talk to their boss like I think I should be pay this amount you know like ask for a raise something like that so again there's a definitely a pro to opening up or talking up about money because it brings awareness to people um and then uh, I would say also another thing with regards to like about money is sometimes when when people are too frugal about it like it seems like a negative connotation when it should not be like people like for Filipinos when they see someone you know spending a lot of money they think that it's a good thing but <laughs> for me as again as a financially literate person I would be like oh this person is gonna be in in deep troubled waters pretty pretty soon so I I know what the effects are gonna be and then yeah when when people when people see you as someone that's frugal sometimes it's like a negative connotation as well um but I would be like oh you're doing great <laughs> so again it it really brings that awareness which is a good thing and you know ignorance is bliss for some people but it's not really gonna be a blissful life because like for example with me like I I know I have student loans but if I will keep on just trying to kind of forget about it 
like I would always have this underlying guilt or fear or anxiety um, like deep down in my very soul like I'm not at peace <laughs> so then um, especially because I know that I owe someone like some money and if I am aware of it and I'm actually doing something to to you know to resolve it to take care of it then at least that fear that underlying guilt that anxiety that would you know decrease um and yeah I mean it affects you your way of life your mental health and everything and um it keeps you from moving on to your uh bigger and better financial goals in your life so don't downplay numbers don't downplay math don't downplay money. <laughs> now I gotta go take a break. <laughs> My friends know that I do that thing and they always make fun of me for doing that sound after like I drink a beverage or something but it's just always a funny inside joke. But anyways, next one is per Filipinos. <laughs> Money is the root of all evil. All right, so as a Filipino, as a Christian, I think this is completely false. And I might get some hate or something, um, but I'm not going to apologize for it. That is my belief. Because in the Bible, it does say, okay, this is word per word, this is 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. It says, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. It says, For the love of money. So, the thing is, if you are willing to serve money as your master, then than the other way around, then that is what is evil. Okay, so again, the difference is that you're willing to serve for the money. You're not letting money serve you. So that basically means that if you love money, um, you would do anything. You would be willing to do anything just to... Um, just to get that money, whether it is, you know, for the right or wrong reasons. So I would say, like, even for the right reasons, like, you have to acquire money in, like, you know, a legal way, obviously, like, not just any other means. So it's how you do and how you use the money that will dictate and provide the result of how you think and see the money so at least for me i see money as a tool and as you guys know as you have seen my videos i always have accounted money for you know for things for different categories and all that stuff so just like a hammer you know or a knife or a screwdriver or i don't know a bed <laughs> um there is a specific purpose for it, but obviously, you know, in a good way, you wouldn't use knife to murder someone, you know? Um, just like money, you need to know on how, on how you're going to give purpose to it. So, are you using it for the good of mankind to, like, bless other people or helping your family, etc.? You see, it's really what you do that... or the what you use the money for is what dictates its meaning basically all right next one is the fiesta or celebration culture so in this kind of culture or mindset filipinos like whenever there's a celebration or there's fiesta or like birthday gatherings and whatnot they would always find a way to make it happen even though their finances are in troubled waters. <laughs> so, again, in general, like, Filipinos are people pleasers, even though, you know, they're 
kind of, well, I shouldn't say like suffering on the inside, but I meant to say like, even though they cannot afford it, they find ways to, to make it happen. Which, I mean, if you think about it, it's actually like, you know, a positive thing. But the thing is, how, how are they affording it? Through debts. I mean, obviously there are some Filipino families that can afford it. So go for it if you can, right? But if not, if like, if you, you, if you barely even make it to like eating three times a day, then probably having like celebration is not feasible, right? Sometimes, you know, yeah, with the fiesta culture, if you don't have means to do it, like it's not bad to actually not do it. Like maybe you just save up for it next time. Like don't fall deeper into further debt, basically. Because you can see people struggling. Like you can tell they're struggling, but they're trying to make it happen. And I get it. I, I, I totally get it. Like, like for me, when I was a kid, like we don't always have the, the best like birthday celebrations. Um, I don't think I've ever experienced like my birthday in like a restaurant like <laughs> so in the Philippines we we have this like you when you were a kid you know you're rich when you have like a Jollibee party so Jollibee is like a Filipino chain restaurant um, from the Philippines and they serve it's like KFC because they have this chicken and then burgers and all that stuff the good stuff um so I've never had that and I know my mom like she really tried her best to to you know give us like a good birthday. So I I real and I really really appreciated that. Honestly, I've I think that's where it's stemming from from like whenever it's my birthday like I just kind of want to be like either like with my friends like my really close friends or um, of course, now, like, with my hubby, like, um, I just want to spend, you know, the day with him and, like, eat at my favorite restaurant. So, I'm not, I'm not, like, a person who, who likes big celebrations, probably because of that. But, again, it's not saying that it's a bad thing, but, you know. But, anyways, we're kind of getting off topic in here. But I'm just saying is that... You know, if you don't have a lot of money to spend, then don't. So, and the thing with that is that you kind of want to really just celebrate for the right reasons. Like, you don't celebrate for the purpose or for the sake of, like, inviting people, like, showing off that you can still afford these kind of things. Like, that's not necessarily celebrating for the right reasons. Like celebrate invite people if you want invite your the people that you actually want that you want to spend the day with them like just don't invite random people just to you know show off to those people like really gotta ask like what what do you want what is your sole intention for this celebration is it for you? Is it spending time and spending quality time with your loved ones, with your friends? Like, don't be pressured at all. And I mean, sometimes with the fiesta celebration culture that we have, it, like, sometimes it's kind of toxic in a way that you have that peer pressure of making sure that you are still able to, to afford these kind of gatherings, even though, again, like, you're sh struggling financially. So, the only person that you need to please is yourself. Um, at least for me, the only person that I need to please is, I would say, myself. Like my loved ones and God. And that's really it. Celebrate for the right reasons and don't feel pressure from other people. Alright, so next one. Um, I hope I don't offend other people. I feel like... <laughs> in each topic, there may be some some people that I, I might offend with. 
So the next one is um, Filipinos kind of like to ask for discounts. And okay, when you first hear that, it's not necessarily bad because again, that's a good thing, you know, asking for discounts, you know, trying to save some money here and there. But the thing is, when I say this, I'm referring it to the two types of Filipino money-wise that I know. Some that, or one, that spends a lot of money, and then the other one, does, the one that does not spend money at all. Obviously, there's going to be some that are in between. Those are probably rare, I would say. Um, <laughs> so for those who are really frugal about their money, they would always be the type of person who would always ask for a discount. And again, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but to an extent, it is not good. <laughs> so just an example. So let's say for a wedding, right? And then you know that you have a really good friend who's really good at photography. You hire them, and then you ask for a discount. Like, the thing is, you have to kind of respect their means of livelihood, you know? When you ask for a discount, if you are really good close friends, I feel like that friend of yours would just be the one themselves to offer a discount to you, not the other way around. Because the thing is, I see that as if you are not respecting the skills um, that they have. You know, it's it's it takes months, even years, to like perfect a skill. You know, you can't really oh, you can't say that. Oh yeah, they're naturally born with it. Like it's not. Um, they didn't have any like hardships to to perfect their skill like no that's not realistic that's no <laughs> so yeah it takes years months to to get good at something it takes months years to to create that business that they have and then again it takes i would say probably years to build a good reputation for you know their business so a lot of those, that's what you're paying for when you think about asking them for discounts. So, you know, have some shame. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I cannot. I'm just kind of sometimes triggered by it. Um, so, and then the other example would be like, for example, small businesses. You know, they, they worked hard for the business that they have. And again, that's their means of livelihood. Like, if you can afford it, like, you know, <laughs> why not pay for the whole thing? If not, then, you know, they can be struggling as much as you are. You just don't know. You just think that, oh, they have their business. Like, I would say, like, full pinos, okay? Most of the time, if they know someone has a business, they always think that that business is thriving, whatever that is. Like, they haven't even talked or interviewed that person. Again, respect the skills, respect their time, respect their resources, um, understand that this is their means of livelihood. And yeah, if you think that the value of their work is worth it, you know, why not pay for the whole thing? Don't hire them with the having the mindset that they think that that you think that they would give you a discount, basically. If you don't have the means to pay for the whole thing, then why get the service? Like if it's something that you are not financially prepared for, then either you yourself find means on how you can afford like the whole thing or just not get the service at all. Like, don't sacrifice someone else's sake for your own sake. Unless they're willing to put up with it. And also keep in mind, like, for example, if it's actually your friend that you're asking service for, there's always that risk of losing that friendship. So there's always that consequence. So, you know, you just gotta pick your battles. Like, is it worth it asking for that 
discount to maybe possibly destroying the friendship yeah don't be that don't be that frugal person if you can't afford it just pay for it you know what i mean and last but not the least having that mindset of settling for less this is more especially for people who came or grew up from a poor family the thing with this kind of mindset is that you're kind of blaming like how you grew up from what your status is now and yes i can say that that is partly true um but at the same time i feel like you yourself alone is the only one who can change your fate as cliche as that sounds but the thing is having this mindset and blaming like how you grew up as a kid and eventually you know not even striving for greater goals you kind of settle f you settle for less you have that complacency mindset wherein oh um, this is what I grew up with, this is what I'm going to be too for the rest of my life, this is what my family and the future generations to come, um, this is what they're going to be for the rest of their life. Like, it's not. No, it's not true. You should learn to, you know, get over that. Obviously, there's a lot of success stories from people who grew up from being poor and now they're like hella rich you know people with this mindset kind of have acquired that learned helplessness so that is like a psychological term wherein if you see other people struggling like you yourself are struggling too like you're not trying to find ways on how to get out of that situation but i think that people who who have these mindset that that they've that they have the complacency mindset i feel like they just need to find a person or a group of people who will show them the way if you find yourself in a situation wherein you're kind of helpless i think that j the way to counter that is to find a group of people or a person that you know that you can learn from them um, like have them as a mentor to lead you off the path of greatness I guess <laughs> yeah you just gotta find that way that like that someone who will serve as an inspiration and that's I think that's what people are lacking the thing is they always get together with people who are also lacking motivation or inspiration so they're they kind of just feed off each other and then the net effect is that both of them didn't learn anything from each other because they just keep on feeding off of each other and that that is a problem right and the thing with also complacency mindset or settling for less is that you tend to do things or have decisions that doesn't necessarily help for your future like i guess just a practical example is that you always tend to buy cheap stuff over like quality stuff and yes i know it does take a lot of money for you to buy quality stuff but when you buy cheap stuff and then it doesn't last that long and then you buy it again and again and again like in the long run you actually spend more money than saving money because you prefer to buy the cheap stuff their like their mindset is to buy cheap stuff and then they think that the quality stuff like they're not able to afford but they can if they just change their mindset and maybe you know um okay i will just save up for it so i don't have to keep on buying it so there's that term delayed gratification so sometimes people don't know the essence of that because again they just think about the now instead of the later that is what are the the negative connotations with regards to having that complacency mindset the thing is 
when you are complacent with what you have, you actually also tend to be jealous of other people's success. You have that negative, it, it brings a negative impact in your thinking, in your way of life, because you think that you can, you are not, you like you won't be able to achieve those things that that successful person has because all you think about is getting jealous and then also like victimizing yourself basically that oh that person probably just came from a wealthy family probably have acquired their wealth from an inheritance or something meanwhile you like you I mean you don't know it about that person because all you see is just being jealous but the truth of the matter is you actually just came from like a similar situation but all you can think about is that you're blaming that situation you're blaming what happened in the past when you you know well you don't know but when you yourself have the capability of changing that you just don't know it because you yourself is so clouded with that mindset of like being a victim and I guess frank as frank as I am um like I mean I feel bad for people who think that way but at the same time like I think they should like they need to be called out because otherwise if no one calls them out then no one will ever no one ever will and then they're not gonna change their their mindset their lifestyle you know the thing is you need to find people who will be able to help you change for you know for the better find people who will bring you to success and then another thing is that when you're complacent you change you tend to to not ask yourself for like what do you deserve? You settle, I mean, like what I said, you settle for less. You think that you only deserve this, like, you know, this kind of things when in fact, you actually deserve bigger things because you've worked hard for it. But all you just need to do is to shift your mindset to think that, yes, I can change this. Yes, I can buy quality stuff. Yes, you know, I will be successful. So ask yourself, what do you really want? Don't just settle for less. Don't just copy what other people have been doing. And in terms of like, when they're also being complacent, like maybe you can copy the people who are like doing great in life. I mean, sometimes I've seen people wherein like they're happy with being content with what they have which is fine whatever I mean it, it is your life live what how you, you want to live your life you know um but there are some people who says they are compl they are content but they know deep inside their soul that they want something more so that one is different if you think you want something more then you I think you should you know, find ways on how to achieve it. And don't just think that you're, you know, you're complacent with, that you're content with what you have. So since this is the last one, like, uh, just an example for me is that, um, I am complacent. I am content in a way with what I have now, like with, you know, with like my relationships, with, um, with like the stuff that I have, with the food that I eat. But at the same time, you know, I find balance wherein, oh, if I want to spend more, then I know that all I need to do is to, you know, work hard for it, to save up for it. So I know eventually I would want to have a second, you know, property wherein it can be like a source of income. And I know I'm not going to get that next year. And I'm, I'm content with that fact, but I know for me to be able to have it, like I'm going to save money for it. So like there's that delayed gratification, 
once I save up money for it, then I know I will be able to, you know, achieve that um, next financial goal that I have. So that's basically what I mean by balance. Like you got to have some balance, but don't settle for less for every single day of your life and like kind of forcing yourself to believe that when in reality like you would want to achieve for more so that was it for my top filipino money culture and myths and i hope that you guys enjoyed it um and i know it's not necessarily like same videos with what i have been doing but I am kind of having fun just exploring other platforms and so yeah let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this talk and <laughs> and yeah if you have any questions or if there is anything else that you want me to talk about in the future just let me know and yeah I hope that you guys like this video. Um, if you guys want to know, know more on how I do my finances and everything, please um, click like button for this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and click the notification bell so that you guys will be notified as soon as I upload my next video. And so with that said, I hope that you guys have a fantastic day and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!